Our scripture this morning comes from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And I'm going to be reading in chapter 18. And it says, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seas of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to his servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. This is the word of God for us this morning. This is a, an interesting little passage in the life of Abraham. If you remember, Abraham is the father of our faith. He is a man that lived in a distant country, and God called out to him and said, I want you to go to this promised land and, and settle there, and your nation or your, your descendants will become many nations, and you will be a blessing to all the earth. And so uh, Abraham left his homeland, came to the land that we now know as Israel, and began to settle there. And it was while he was there that this passage happened. Uh, where he was at his tent one day in the heat of the day, so in the afternoon, when three men came to the entrance of his tent. And he ran out to meet them and bowed before them, calling them lords and saying he was their servant and asked if he could get them uh, some water, get them some food and, and take care of them and, and offer them some hasp hospitality. That was kind of the culture that Abraham lived in. Uh, it was a culture of, of hospitality to those who came by. As they came to his house, we don't know how many more miles it would be to the next town or even the next home. And so it was uh, thought that people should care for one another as they come traveling through. And so Abraham ran out uh, to greet these three strangers that were at his front door. Uh, is that the kind of culture we live in today? If three strange men came up to your door, do you guys just open up the door and have them come on in and give them some food and something to drink? We wouldn't do that, would we? Our, my Wednesday morning small group said, no way three strange men are getting in my house, you know? Uh, I still remember growing up, my grandparents lived right across the street from us, and uh, so I'd be over there quite often. My grandma, oh, several times, we would see these men, usually it was two of them, with white shirts and black ties coming towards the door, and grandma's like, quiet, get down, and we would hit the floor, <laughs> and we'd sneak off to the side because we didn't want them to see us through the front door that we were in there and she'd turn the lights off and you know we just sit there quietly I of course was curious so I wanted to peek around the window and things and eventually I'd see them walking to our neighbor's door and so then it, the all clear was given and we could make a little noise uh, from then on but you know we, we would kind of hide from people and that's just because she didn't want to talk to them right but nowadays if, if you see three strange men coming to your front door we worried about what pushy salesmen uh, maybe a con artist or someone wanting that kind of help, uh, or even thieves might come up. You know, nowadays you never know what someone's going to do when they're coming to your door, and so we hide or we don't open the door, and we stay away. We don't offer the hospitality that Abraham did. When Abraham saw these three strangers, he he offered himself as a servant to them, and said, "Let me get, let me take care of you for a little while." And did you see how fast he moved? As soon as they said yes. Uh, go ahead and, and get us these things. It said he hurried off. Three times in those seven verses, it said he hurried. Uh, he hurried into the house and said, quick, make some bread. He hurried out, ran out to his herd and selected their snack and gave it to a servant, said, hurry up and prepare this for them. And he was just moving all about getting all these things together in order to care for these three men that just showed up at his front door. And, and, and I love the image in my head at the end of it. After he gave them all their food, it said he stood near them by a tree, in the shade of a tree. And so he didn't dine with them. He allowed them to have their space, but like a good butler or a good wait, waiter, he just stood over to the side and waited for them to be in need. And I'm sure if one of those men lifted their glass, it was empty. He would hurry over and, can I get you some water or milk and, and refill it for you? And, and I'm sure he was just jumping in to take care of them as much as he could. He had this heart for hospitality and, and caring for these three people that have shown up at his front door of his tent. And what I want to encourage us to think about this morning is, is how might we get back to that culture a little bit? How we might be willing to care for those that are around us instead of hiding or um, turning the other direction when there's someone in need or in care right in front of us. Uh, should we turn towards them and, and offer ourselves as Abraham did instead of looking the other direction? 
Uh, we are, in the beginning of this new year, looking at our church vision again and just reminding ourselves of what it is God calls us to do and to be as a church. And our church vision is to be a church where you, what? See Christ, right? We want people to see Christ in us uh, as we live out our faith. And we do that by the S-E-E of C, serve Christ, experience Christ, and embrace Christ. And last week we talked about experiencing Christ in small groups. And uh, we looked at the passage where Jesus shows up uh, in the midst of uh, a fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in their small group uh, as they were thrown into the furnace, that God showed up and, and delivered them from that fiery furnace. And, and God was present with them there, and how important it is for us to be in small groups because God shows up in the midst of that time with one another. And, and this week I brought this passage because I see Jesus show up again. I see God in this passage as well. Did you all see Jesus in there? You might have missed him because I kind of hid him from you a little bit. Uh, I didn't read verse 1 uh, because I think verse 1 gives it all away. Uh, but if we go back to verse 1, Genesis 18, 1, so right before all this stuff I already read, it says, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. So at the very beginning of this passage, it says, this is the Lord. This isn't just three strange men. It's actually, Lord, some scholars say it was, it was God uh, there in the middle and then two angels. I wonder if maybe it's not part of the Trinity, the, the three, because we're not really told who these three exactly are. Uh, but in verse one, it says it is the Lord. But I skip that because when we read that, we think, oh, well, Abraham knew it was the Lord when we read that. But if you read the rest of the passage, nowhere does it really look like Abraham knew it was the Lord. He says, I'm your servant, my Lord, and it was lowercase l. Did you notice that? If it was God, it would have been an uppercase l for Lord. And so Abraham doesn't realize it's the Lord, and yet he served these three people as if they were the Lord, didn't he? Didn't he serve them as if they were? And we would all say, if Jesus shows up at my front door, I'm letting him in, right? I'll let him in. I'll take care of him. But three strangers, no way. That's kind of our attitude. But that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to see him in everyone around us. God wants us to see Christ in every person so that we might choose to serve them as if we are serving the Lord. And so that's the key that I want us to get as we think about where we serve and how we serve is to, to not look at the, maybe the work we have to do, but look at other people as if Christ is in them and we serve them as if we would serve Christ, the one who gave his life for us. And, and as we think of serving and, and looking at our vision as well, um, as we talk about small groups, you could argue with me that Jesus never tells us to get into a small group. I've, I've read the Gospels, all four of them, and it doesn't anywhere in there Jesus say, to be a Christian, you have to be in a small group. Jesus doesn't say that. I think he lives it, so I would have that conversation with you. He lives it. He has his 12 disciples. He even has three that are even closer than that, kind of his inner circle of James, John, and Peter. And so Jesus lived in small groups, but he never says you have to be in a small group. So we could have that conversation. When it comes to service, you can't have that conversation. You can't say Jesus never said to serve because time and time again in the Gospels, Jesus says, be a servant. Serve one another, care for one another, love one another. Time and time and again, he says that's something we are called to do as followers of him. Just a few examples uh, from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9. says Jesus, This is Jesus talking. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. So Jesus says we are to be servants of all people um, around us. Mark 10 says, for even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, and he's talking here again, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus, God in the flesh, he didn't come to be served. Now, we all should serve him, right? He's worthy of that, that service. He, we should honor him with it, but he says that's not why he came. He came to serve to give of himself for others. And then the, just the last one, again, there's many of these uh, in the Gospels. Uh, from Matthew 25, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And so right there, Jesus says exactly what we're talking about. He says, see me in anyone that you serve. If you see someone who's hungry, feed them as if you're feeding me. If you see someone who's thirsty, give them water as if you would give water to me. If you see someone that's lonely, visit them as if you would visit me. We are to look at the people around us and recognize that Christ is in them. And then we should serve them with a servant's heart um, and care for them as if we were caring for God himself. And so I want you to be thinking about how is it that you serve God? Uh, we want every person connected to our church to have at least one ministry 
that they serve in, one place that they, they care for other people, that they offer the skills and uh, the talents, the gifts that they have in, in order to uh, transform this world through God's love and God's grace. Uh, hopefully, as you came in, you got a little uh, opportunity to serve sheet. Did y'all get those? Can you take that out? I hope that y'all got those as, as you came in. It just is a, a list of some of the opportunities to serve. Um, if not, there's extras over on, on the welcome table. It just has a list of some things that actually came to my mind uh, and to the staff's mind of current opportunities, current things that uh, might be needed. You know, sometimes opportunities to serve, they just walk up to your front door like they did with Abraham. Other times you have to go looking a little bit. And you don't always know those opportunities are there until someone lets you know. And so these were just some ways to let you know there are opportunities for each and every one of us uh, to serve. Uh, just looking through the list a little bit, ushering, um, you know, just passing out the bulletins, taking the offering. If you're here on Sunday, uh, you could be an usher and help out. And you just circle which uh, service you'd like to do that, or usher coordinator. If you'd like to schedule the ushers, maybe you're gifted at that, at scheduling and coordinating people. Some people are a lot better at that than I am. And uh, right now, Sonia does that, but it'd be a great thing to kind of set off of her plate uh, if you're interested in, in doing that and coordinating some of our ushers. Uh, the next one's an indoor Larry. Uh, that needs a little explanation. Uh, Larry McArder is one of our members, one of our church members. He was here at the last service. Uh, but Larry takes care of all of our church property outside of the building. He mows the, our grass, he uh, moves the gravel in the parking lot, he paints the lines uh, out in the parking lot. Uh, just about anything outside, he does, or he and his wife, they take care of the flower beds and things, um, just because he wants to. He loves to serve in that way. Uh, he says it gets him out of the house, he enjoys doing it. And for uh, the staff and the church, it's awesome because we don't have to worry about it. Uh, sometimes I think, oh, we need this outside, and then Larry's doing it before I even get a chance to talk to him. He just always is wanting to serve and care for those things. And so I was thinking, you know, it'd be great if we had an indoor Larry, uh, someone that would be inside the church, uh, watching things, taking care of things, because if lights go out, light bulbs go out, uh, a lot of times I'm up on the ladder doing that. And it'd be nice to have someone that's just kind of looking for that, and that they'll just take care of that. Or uh, our furnace filters, you know, they need to be changed from time to time. Someone that would just watch that. Otherwise, it's on our staff, and it's kind of a side job that we, you know, when we remember it, we take care of it, but a lot of times with everything else going on, we forget. And so it'd be great to have someone just say, I'll be the indoor Larry and I'll just take care of this and that and, and work with the trustees as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, mark that one. Other little things like inside, you know, taking care of the plants inside as well. Uh, if you love doing those kind of things, it's an opportunity to serve. Coordinating our poinsettias and lilies, those are the flowers a lot of times we'll get for Christmas and Easter. Again, that's another thing that's just on the staff, but if someone wanted to coordinate that, it'd be a lot easier uh, for them to, to take care of that. Our, our attic that serves um, our community through the clothes closet we have upstairs. We have a great group on Monday morning. There's sometimes too many of them in there. Thursday nights, not so much. Uh, we, sometimes if someone's sick, it's hard to get somebody to replace them. And so if you have Thursday evenings available, we want to just welcome people as they come in uh, to use our attic. That'd be a great way to serve. Uh, we have a group that goes out to Highland Ridge once a month to help with bingo out there. If you want, they know they need a few more hands for that. A nurture team would be visiting people. Uh, we have people in their homes, people in care centers that need someone to come and visit. Uh, Highland Ridge alone, we have 18 people connected to our church out there. And, and I'm out there at least once a month uh, checking on folks, but it'd be great for them to have other visits, uh, other folks stopping in to see how they're doing. If you're interested in that, mark the nurture team. We're gonna have a meeting in a couple weeks uh, and get that thing organized. Uh, I was reminded this week just how powerful prayer is, and you can serve through prayer. Maybe all these other things don't work in your schedule or with your time, but you say, I, I can serve by praying. And if you mark that one and, and give me your, your contact info, I'll, I'll check with you. How do you want to pray? What's your passion? Is it for the world and things going wrong, on around us? Or is it for our community? Is it for our church? Is it for your pastors that need a lot of prayer? Uh, what, where is your passion? And we invite you to serve through prayer there. Uh, working in our kitchen, keeping things up in there is always a good thing. Uh, new member mentor, we've never had this, but we thought, you know, if someone is new to our congregation, what if we had some uh, members that are willing to just check on them? Just say, hey, are you finding everything that you need? And how are you doing? And, and just kind of touch base with them. Or other. Maybe this has led to something else. You're, I've always wanted us to do this. Then write that down. Uh, put your name on there. Contact info. I have baskets on both sides. So after the service, you can come up and you can just put that in the basket uh, as an offering. And it's a way that we can serve. Find those opportunities to care for others that are around us. Those are just some of the ways that I saw this week as I was thinking about what is it that could uh, use an extra pair of hands, an extra pair of feet. Um, an extra heart to care for those who are around us. And, and as we do this, as we serve one another because we see Christ in them, our hope is that they'll see Christ in us too, right? That's our hope, is that as we serve them and as we have that servant's heart, that they'll look at us and they will see Christ. That's what our vision's about, is letting others see Christ. 
and they will see Christ as we have that servant heart and care for those who are around us. And uh, a wonderful example Jesus gave us is in John 13, where he washes his disciples' feet. Uh, as he did that, his disciples and Jesus had gathered in a room, and uh, it was the job of a servant to wash feet. That was their job. Uh, but so far, as they got to that meal, everyone said, that's not my job. That's somebody else's job. And the disciples, one of them probably should have done it, not Jesus. He's the master. He's the teacher. But eventually Jesus said, I'll do it. I'll wash their feet. And he got a towel, and he, he got water and began to wash his disciples' feet. He was willing to say, I'll do that for you. I will serve you. And he showed us a servant heart. And I love seeing that in people around us. A few weeks ago during the, the holidays, Kinsey uh, closes down for a little while. And so during that time, uh, two days, uh, Dolores Reinhart, who did our children's moment, she came in and she started cleaning our kitchen. Our kitchen, you know, we use it quite a bit, but we don't always give it the full uh, cleaning that it deserves. And she just started cleaning. I had no idea she was coming. She just started doing that. One full day, I think she was on her knees scrubbing the floor just cleaning that thing off. It looked like a brand new floor when, when she got done. It was amazing. And I just wanted to publicly thank her uh, for that service that she gave to us and the, the great cleaning that she did in there. But also then a few days after that, I was talking with Diane Jones, who is our custodian. Uh, and Diane was kind of saying that we, we got onto the, that Dolores had been in there cleaning. And Diane said that she apologized to Dolores. And she said, I'm sorry, I should be doing this and I should be, be cleaning that. And uh, Diane only works 10 hours a week. That's what we pay her for, at least 10 hours a week. Um, but she does vacuuming the whole building, mopping it, wiping everything down, takes care of our trash. Those 10 hours go pretty quick, uh, taking care of this building. And so she was saying she, she was sorry she couldn't get to more and clean our kitchen that way. And Dolores said, to, don't, don't be sorry. This is not your job. This is our job. And I was just amazed at that servant heart that she said, this is, this is our job. This is our church. We're, we're going to take care of it. You know, so often the attitude I, I see uh, in this world is uh, it's someone else's job, right? Someone else will take care of it. We pay someone to do that, so I don't have to do that. Uh, we don't have that servant heart because we expect someone else to do it. But Jesus doesn't expect others to do it. He expects us to do it. He says, you are my servants. As we follow him, we are called to serve one another, to see Christ in them, and then hopefully they can see Christ in us as, as we care for them, as we serve them. So I want to challenge you and, and encourage you to find your ministry. If you already have one, if you have a place that you're serving, uh, then thank you for your service and keep up that service. And don't think I'm talking just in the church either. If you're serving in your schools, if you're serving at work, if you're serving somewhere else, that counts, okay? We don't want to be legalistic that it has to be in the church. God calls us all to find those ministries. So uh, if you have that ministry, thank you for the work that you do. If you don't have a ministry yet, then, then pray about it. See where God might be calling you. Be, be a waiter, not waiting for something to come, but, but waiting to see that opportunity and then jumping on it and, and getting on your knees and, and serving someone because you see Christ in them. You want to serve them as Christ has served us. So be prayerful about that opportunity to serve. Find that place to uh, allow the gifts and talents that God has given to you be used uh, for his kingdom and to transform this world through God's love and God's grace. Find that place uh, where you can serve. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that um, you call us to serve, and not just because you want to um, be a master that tells us to serve, but because you first served us, because you first came not to be served, but to offer yourself for each and every one of us. Help us to receive that gift of your life, and help us, Lord, to, to open our eyes to see you in the people that are around us. Encourage us not to, to run and hide when we see someone in need or to turn the other direction but help us to, to fall on our knees and to offer ourselves as servants of your people that are all around us. May we serve you as we serve the least of these. We pray this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.